What's up everybody? This is Dave from the Dave HT3 here with a, another RC Heli tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about lubricants. As you can see, I've got lubes everywhere here. If you're flying a nitro, if you're using this in your tank, you probably won't need this video. Nitro is a uh, mixture of nitromethane and uh, certain types of castor oils. The nitro gets burned through your motor, but the castor oils still escape through the exhaust and you see the white plume or blue plume of smoke which covers everything on the heli. That's, that's usually the leftover castor oil that wasn't burned through the combustion uh, sequence there. But if you're using one of these, you're going to want to stay tuned because um, lubrication for your electric heli is imperative. I can't stress enough how important it is to use these lubricants and use them correctly in order to maintain a properly functioning heli and to reduce the chances of a crash due to uh, static discharge. Alright guys, the first grease we're going to talk about is just this normal, you know, everyday grease. It's a multi-purpose, high temperature grease. You can find it at Walmart, Napa, Ace, pretty much anywhere they sell auto, hardware, that type of thing. You want to pick up a nice tube of this and dove it out in these little containers. This is like a little makeup container that Melissa had. Little Hamro 5, she gives them to me. And I fill them up with grease because I don't want to carry this big thing around. The thing's huge. It's like a foot long. So, yeah, put that in something smaller. Make it easier to manage and put it in your flight box and you always have it with you. And we primarily use this, this normal, just everyday grease, this high temp, thick stuff on like thrust bearings. And you've seen me do this before. I'll show you again. Get a little zoom in here. Here's our grease. Here's our thrust bearing. And what you want to do is in that pocket where the, the rollers are, just dip this in and go around. I really prefer the white grease. This red stuff is a little thick. But then you want to pack that in your bearings really good. You want to just push that all through your bearings. You know, get it all over the place. Don't be afraid of it. Get it all over your hands. It don't matter. Just cover the whole bearing in this. And this will pre prevent corrosion. Keep your things running smooth and uh, just reduce issues, you know. Why run a bearing with no lube in it and have them rust out and you pull your, your head apart and your thrust bearing comes out in a bunch of little BBs that go all over the floor. That's no fun, you know. And flying something like that with a fly bar, barless system is just crazy. I wouldn't even try it. So the grease is very important. Uh, make sure you got some of that. Put in a container where you can have portability where it's with you all the time so if you're in a bind and you gotta grease something up or someone needs some grease your buddy or something you got your thing you know you're going to, you're going to be set alright guys the next one up is the marvel or what everybody is going to swear by is the tri-flow um, this grease is primarily used just on your motor or bearings that you're not going to pull apart um, these bearings, these roller bearings, have a shielding in there. You know, they're not a thrust bearing, it's a, it's a full-on roller bearing. You can pull the shielding out, and you can grease it properly with that thick um, multi-purpose grease we just talked about. Oh, come on, um, I've got, what, two, four, six, eight, about probably 10 or 12 of these types of bearings in my heli, maybe more. I'm not going to pull the shieldings out during maintenance and, you know, pack them with grease. You should, usually I just replace the bearings, you know, if I get a notchy bearing, I just replace it, you know, when it comes up in a crash. But if you happen to make it that long and you didn't crash and you want to do some maintenance with your bearings, you take your tri-flow or your, your marvel like I like to use. If you're a welder, it's really convenient because, you know, air tools or a mechanic, you know, every shop's got this. It's really good because you can just put a little bit of that on your bearing and you can see it already just sinking in through the shielding. It's going to go really quick and it's already like sucked into the shielding. Some of my Marvel, or if you, you prefer Tri-Flow, go ahead and just, you know, dip that in your motor bearings. It's really important. Uh, you know, you seize up your motor, <laughs> that's a mess, so. Okay guys, on to the lithies. Once again here, we have a, a pretty large container. There's my hand on it. I mean, that, that thing is, that's a big container. I'm not putting that in my flight box. I'm not dragging it with me. 
Um, Lil Hammer, once again, she likes to use a lot of lip glosses and chapsticks and such. Here's an empty one. Instead of just tossing it away, she said, hey, can you use this? And I said, sure, I'll find a use for it. What I did was I took the lithies, brought back the plunger all the way down as far as it would go, and just packed it with grease. It only took a minute or so, and I don't have to carry this big container around with me. And what I use this for primarily is my main gear, especially when you're cutting a main gear. They recommend lithium grease. So what you can do with this little container, instead of having you know that big tub with you, get a little bit out, get it on your main gear. Of course, your main gear is already going to be installed in your heli, but you're just going to smear a little bit of that on there, a couple globs, and then just get a light film across the whole gear using your fingers lightly and when you send this through your motor and your pinion it, it'll lube it up but you want a nice thin film across the whole gear and it's really neat you know once you fire up for the first time that stuff just slings everywhere <laughs> it's all over the inside of your canopy where the main gear runs it's uh, it's up in between your pinion and your your carbon frames it gets everywhere, but it's highly recommended to cut your main gear, especially a first time with like a 600 size heli or 700 size heli or bigger. Cut your main gear with the lith lithium grease. And uh, I like to use it full time. I use it all the time. I always smear some on. Um, one thing to be careful about is if you have a standoff at the top of your motor where your pinion sits inside, you got to clean that out, especially after the first flight, after you initially cut your gear. If your gear is Delrin or some other type of plastic, you're going to see little shards everywhere. So what you want to do is pull out your motor, unfortunately, after your first time you cut it. Or if you can get in there without removing your motor and get the little shards out and clean it out, then reapply the grease. It'll run pretty smooth after that without any issues as far as the plastic goes. But you gotta watch for sand, grit, dirt, even grass clippings and such I think could cause a problem over, you know, prolonged periods without cleaning. It's gonna bind up. And Next up is the silicone grease. Silicone grease, I use it primarily during building when I'm putting in a shaft, main shaft, tail shaft, spindle shaft. Um, even on your motor, if you got a motor shaft, you should probably put a little bit on it. Um, most of the shafts in our helis are made of carbon steel. Uh, they may be hardened, whatever, but they're still carbon steel and they can rust. Uh, dampeners as well. I always put silicone grease on my dampeners. Um, it helps them slide on a lot smoother. And it helps preserve them. This won't eat away at the secret materials that they use to make these dampeners <clears throat> what you want to do is just lube up your dampener there you know let's say we're we're putting a head back together and I got my spindle shaft coat your dampener and then coat your spindle shaft what and what this is going to act as is like a rust inhibitor it's not going to allow rust to propagate when um, moisture is present. You'll notice if your heli sits for a few years and you don't do this, you'll get like moisture in there and your spindle shaft will be rusted. That Raptor I got, the spindle shaft was rusted because it had sat for about 10 years and they didn't do this. But what you want to do is cover your shafts with the silicone lube and then put on your dampener or install your shaft. And then what this is going to do is just provide a little bit of lubrication in the system it's going to preserve your dampener and it's going to act as a rust inhibitor it's not going to allow rust to build up let's say that heli sat for a few months and you live in a damp or humid environment uh, and you decide to go fly your heli and you know everything's all stuck together because it rusted because of the, the humidity and the dampness so I really strongly recommend just using this silicone grease on all your shafts right before you install them and on your dampeners and that'll help preserve everything okay our last item here is the pure silicone lubricant this is used primarily on your tail belt if your tail is driven by a belt 
and you're not using the uh, lithies on your main gear like we talked about you're going to want to put some silicone lubricant and what we're going to do is I'm going to go outside and do a little demo on how to lube your tail All right. I got the 6HV sitting here and my uh, pure silicone lubricant and a Q-tip. I'm going to show you how to lube up your tail belt if your LE is tail driven. Just give her a good shake. And the wind's heading that way, so I'm going to kind of go downwind here. Spray a nice little amount in there. You can see that. Just want to get enough to get the tail done. Come on over here if you want. I like to do, you don't want to spray that all over your tail, it's no fun. What I like to do is take my Q-tip, so we got our silicone solution into a cup, dip our Q-tip, and then going clockwise, at least with the 6HV, you notice the cogs down here, I can get right down in there and go clockwise and just lay the Q-tip on there, being careful not to get sucked into the pulley back here. And I can feel the whole system just loosening up, even with the friction from the Q-tip, it's becoming very smooth. You also want to make sure to get the outside of your belt as well. Okay. And of course, get your shaft. Use any of the remaining stuff in the container to get miscellaneous stuff around the tail, like the bearings in the tail case any spacers you might have. The silicone will help protect it and keep it running nice and smooth. Work that in a little bit. Could even use your silicone on these knuckle joints here. Let it soak in a little bit. You have a nice smooth working tail. You want to get some of your silicone up in your pulleys too. Because this stuff will coat them and sit in there and it will keep working even when you think it's gone. A uh, good friend of mine who's a pretty good pilot tells me you should only have to do this once or twice a season. I do it quite frequently, but supposedly only once a season is all it's required, but I crash a lot. <laughs> so, and if you're using the silicone lubricant on your main gear, like I know a lot of people do, I like to just run a bead across here and let it sink down. Mine's dirty because I use the lithium, but this won't hurt nothing. Let that slide down and then you move counterclockwise about one third of a turn and continue and you want this to just drip down all over the gears and coat them really good and this provides great lubrication it's uh, like I said it's an insulator so it's going to reduce the chance of having a static discharge and ruining your power system or causing a crash Okay guys, if you're still with me, thanks for watching. Um, go ahead and be sure to check out the website at the davyht 3 productionsweeblycom And if you're interested in winning an MCPX, uh, you've got from now till August 1st is when uh, we're going to have the drawing. So be sure to check out the website and uh, go ahead and check out the video for the MCPX giveaway. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and you have a chance to win a... A working MCPX. It's not the best in the world. You're going to have to invest about 30 bucks worth of parts, but uh, it's definitely worth it. Uh, mail it right to your doorstep. Good luck. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful. Peace.